Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I am your, as you can probably tell, already delighted host, Kevin, because I've just got the chance to meet Graham Snowfield, and I'm already kind of want to go to Bend with him, <laughs> go like tour Oregon. I want to go up and meet him in Vancouver, BC. This gentleman is amazing, and I can't wait to A, get to know him a little bit better, and B, share him with you. So let me give you a tiny taste of Graham. Graham's purpose is to be a constant and expanding example of what is achievable. I love that statement. Among his many endeavors and adventures, he is the founder of Wild Walks Remote Wilderness Coaching and Semper Leadership Certified Coaching. Um, as you'll find if you click over to LinkedIn or go down in the show notes, he's he's up to a lot of stuff, has been, and probably always will be up to a lot of stuff. So Graham, thank you for making some time today. It is truly a pleasure to get to know you. <laughs> thank you very much. Likewise, I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's go back to the beginning, not the beginning, beginning, because obviously we don't have that kind of time. But your your origins as a superhero, how did you get your powers as a coach? How did you discover or find the right mentor or the right mentor found you who gave you the right words at the right moment to trigger that beginning of your coaching journey? It's a great question. And it's it is interesting as uh, like many others, I hit a transition point, I would say, in my life and my career. Hmm. I'd you know, been hard charging in the world of real estate development, real estate sales and marketing for you know, about a decade, uh, hmm. working with you know, very large international developers and those based in Vancouver. Hmm. But it just wasn't that thing that was exciting me the same way. Also, in my corporate career, I was typically the person that got hired because the company wanted change. Huh. And for the first six months, they really liked that idea. <laughs> and then eventually, they're like, wait, no, we don't do it like that. Or that's not how we do it here. Or we're not ready for that. And you start bumping up against this friction. And so as I started to hit this friction transition points, very graciously, my, my dad had actually asked me if I had ever thought about working with a coach or if I wanted to working with a coach and he had a relationship professionally with the firm. And so I met, you know, one of their coaches and mm. he and I had a, a great relationship. I worked with Bradley for the Roy group for, I'm going to say sort of like six to 12 months mm, nice. in that range. It's some really great work about figuring out, what do what are my life's design principles? What really fulfills me? What am I most excited about? And how do I want to go and do that? And that just shifted my trajectory, really sort of put me more on the path of a lot more personal development, taking a more of a coaching perspective to leadership. Hmm. I you know, transitioned my career a couple of times, went into sports sponsorship and marketing, and worked with Worcester Blackcomb, worked with the competitor group, which was purchased by Iron Man. Hmm. So I've done some neat stuff in that space. And then I had another transition point or friction point in uh, the most important relationship of my life with my, with my now wife. Ooh. And I had <laughs> another coach who had shown up in my life sort of around the, the periphery. And, you know, I was, I went for breakfast one day and I started asking a question. I said, here's my you know, four or five things that I need to work through. And he responded by saying, well, you realize it's actually one, two, and three. Hmm. <laughs> well, crap. Uh, and I said, <laughs> yes. And he asked me some really great questions. And that was also time I could learn the power of asking you know, really powerful questions. Hmm. And so Bill and I, I think we had that conversation now nine or 10 years ago. We have now uh, spoken every Friday morning. For that hmm. entire time period. Wow. Uh, a few years ago, about five years ago, I transitioned from working in, I worked for the largest fitness company in Western Canada. The hmm. founders were the same as sort of 24 hour and crunch and UFC gym, some of the bigger US okay. brands, both on the East and West coast of the US. So I was running their sales and marketing in Canada. And then I transitioned uh, to working for a financial services company company. I think, as you mentioned earlier, if you look at my LinkedIn, it's like, how do these threads weave? Uh, <laughs> the, the, the thread is leadership, but it was also interesting as I transitioned to work for the financial services company, the insurance brokerage, it was really an opportunity for me to come in and lead as a coach inside an organization, operate as a coach. I was doing stuff outside of it on my own, hmm. but I came and I just really had the opportunity. I became a certified high performance coach 
mm. through Brennan Burchard. Mm -hmm. I've now six or seven times certified through his group. Yeah. And so that sort of led me to, I saw the power of my benefit and experience and growth with coaches. I saw the positive impact that it had on all of the relationships in my life. Yep. <laughs> and I, you know, I just went like, this is, I've always also had lots of coaches in the athletic space. And so I really just sort of went, I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. And that's when I really started to figure out my purpose about being that constant explaining example of what is achievable. And I really love helping people figure it out for themselves. And it's interesting because we talk about things like paydays and the hmm. emotional payday hmm. is always so much greater than the, you know, yes, I appreciate the one that helps pay my mortgage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it doesn't bring those like positive tears to my eyes the, the same way that seeing somebody have a breakthrough does. Being on either side of an investment like that and, and an investment paying off, whether you were invested in and or invested in yourself and you put the time in, you put the effort in, you put the resources in and then having that basically flourish like it's, it's like it's like watching a flower bloom or the sun come up and i know that sounds kind of romantic and poetic but i i really genuinely feel that way and i think i think that's what you're describing is that there's there's really nothing quite like that payday um and it's really like it's obviously you're in the business to to make money that's you know it's kind of the way that things work but it's also what really keeps you in it and what really like gets you out of bed in the morning and really that drives you forward is that that buy-in literal and figurative that you get from your clients and then you get to work with them towards and i love that you identified this because this comes up all the time that that discovery of better questions just like yeah i had five you know actually it's three and then as, as you keep going you keep like you're looking to cut you're refining you're sharpening iron sharpening iron as, the, as that kind of stuff goes and there's just there's really nothing quite like it and i know that's an easy thing to say but I think that's why so many, in my opinion, great people are drawn to coaching because there's really nothing quite like, not just that you're being helpful, but the way in which you're helping someone discover for themselves how they're going to become their best self, the version of themselves that they want to be. And you get to be a part of that journey without it being your journey. And that's, I just, quite frankly, I'm in love with the whole thing. <laughs> so obviously a lot of coaches are too. There really is a spark of romance to what we get to do and how we get to participate in the in the lives and the growth of others. No, it, it, you're dead on. It was even interesting because I was, we were talking before the show began about you know, the Tim Ferriss podcast, stuff like that. And I was sharing about, you know, listening to the interview with, with Andrew Huberman. And I was listening to that episode and I just came out of a group coaching session that I do with these, you know, an intact sales team inside the organization. And a lot of us know the question of what would you do if you knew you could not fail or what would you attempt if you mm -hmm. could not fail? And in this episode with Tim and, and Huberman, they flipped the question. At one point, Tim flips the question about, you know, if you had five projects in front of you, which one would you still do? knowing that you would fail what would mm -hmm. you glean from the process what would you learn what relationships would you have to build and it was really interesting because in this conversation there's you know five or six people in this small group coaching the sales team we're literally over the next six weeks we're literally just going to work through each one of them a major prospect and major business opportunity that they have okay so what would you learn what would be worth, which prospect would be worth trying to win because of the overall benefit that you would experience, the relationships you would build, what you would learn, the skills you would develop, who else you would share that information with. And it's, it really is this, you know, waterfall moment for a lot of people. And it's, yeah, and, it, and it's really exciting as people start to sort of figure, okay, yeah, here's what I need to do. Or they start seeing these light bulbs go off. Mm -hmm. And I, first of exciting. all, we're getting very meta here because I also listened to this episode and I remember that exact moment where they flipped that question. So what would you do if you knew you would fail? And I, I got, I was excited about it for weeks after I first listened to it. Cause I was just like, that's, that's exactly what coaching really is. It's like, all you did was really move some words around in an already well-known question. You shifted the perspective relatively slightly and opened up a whole new avenue, a boulevard of opportunity to explore what really matters about what we're doing, what really matters to me, what matters to the organization, what's going to matter to the people that we serve, and really interrogating that from a perspective that it's it's counterintuitive at first. And then once you start it, you're like, why didn't I do this years ago? <laughs> and, it, and it's interesting because it is that premise of helping people get a different perspective that is sort of the impetus for 
you know, in my bio you shared, you know, I've created this program called Wild Walks Remote hmm. Wilderness Coaching. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that segue. And <laughs> I've spent a lot of time in the back country. I've done a lot of my athletics. I've been ultra distance endurance athlete. I've done 250 kilometer self-supported races. So if you've got uh, Imperial measurement listeners, I think that's sort of like 185 <laughs> miles uh, <laughs> over five or six days and you carry all your stuff on your back. But just this, so for the past decade at a bare minimum, I have spent 10 consecutive days in nature without access to a cell phone signal. Mm. And so I know the benefit that my body gets from, you know, recharge that for my mind that gets recharged from, from doing that. And when COVID hit, a lot of people started spending more time in the outdoors, especially in the Pacific Northwest, as you would know. Yes. And so a lot of the places that were sort of these undiscovered gems started to get discovered. And so I started mm. looking a little bit further. I started going, okay, what is, what is different? What is newer? How could mm. I create these types of, experiences for people mm. and the very simple pitch for people is uh, we drive until the road ends mm. we fly until land ends mm. and then we get picked up in five days <laughs> and it's interesting we do some different environments but one of the things that's very interesting to do for people is usually on day two we're in some very picturesque, beautiful, rugged wilderness or some alpine lake hmm. and sitting above a waterfall. Nice to everybody. Okay, everyone needs to sit 30 yards, 50 meters apart. And you don't get your phone because you don't have access to cell phone signal. You don't get your journal. And you're going to sit here for 60 to 90 minutes. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. And you know what? That You say that, and it sounds simultaneously like the easiest thing in the world. Just sit there and don't do anything. And also the hardest thing in the world, <laughs> which is why it's so valuable, I think. Well, and, that, and that's the whole thing, is that this premise of let's get people away from the distractions mm -hmm. so that they can actually really start to figure out what matters most. And at the same time, give themselves their own time to, to build perspective, to think through things that are really important to them, to figure out what is, if it's in their business, if it's in a relationship, if it's just a project that they're trying to work on. It's that opportunity to really have them sit in that space. They can't be distracted. They have to think about it while also being in nature. I'm sure many of your listeners know the huge benefit to being in nature. So I won't go into that necessarily today, but if you don't, <laughs> all I'll say is, Three days that you need three days to get about to get better than a 20% improvement in, in, in stress, anxiety, and PTSD. It's literally called the three day effects. If people want to Google it, there's studies around it. It's amazing. And that sounds conservative to me in my, out of my personal experience, which I'm of course biased because I love the outdoors and have derived so much, so much both energy and peace. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of, it's, it's kind of, it's one of those things where I like, I like how often I end up speaking in borderline paradoxes when talking about some of the effects of just intelligent and curated coaching experiences, like what you're putting, what, what you put together here. Um, there's, there is something both relaxing and motivating, like enervating and also stilling about it. And again, I, I, I as, as you probably noticed already, I tend to wax romantic and poetical when it comes to these kinds of things. That's because I find it is the best way to access the real I mean, again, this sounds trite, but the real life-changing experience you could have, even in, you know, three to five days, like, it's just, it's amazing. And if, if, if people will just like say yes to it and let the, like, let's crack the door open. It's like, let's give this a shot and see what happens. I mean, I mean it speaks for itself, but I love having you speak for it as well. <laughs> no, it is, that, that trip, right, one of the destinations that I really love is you land on an old logging dock. Oh, and you end up on a you know a forest service road that is still somewhat maintained on the on the west coast of British Columbia. Within about a hundred meters, you are seeing animal prints of hmm. wolves and bears. Now hmm. we land at the middle of the day on purpose because this is the only part of that route that is inland. The rest is on the coast, on the beaches, on rock, so you're safe. But very quickly, the the guest or the client hmm. is immediately aware that they are somewhere different mm -hmm. 
at very where it's a very safe environment. We control it like it is very safe. We take proper precautions. However, at the same time, it's it's very it's very different. The the physical challenge on it. Someone asked me a couple of years ago, what is the total elevation gain? Hmm. Uh, on one of these trips, it's about yeah. like I think it's forty seven meters. Oh geez. <laughs> so, so so every yeah, so it's not very much. And that's like that's over yeah. five days. Cause you're on what I remember what I remind people is we're doing this at sea level on the coast. So we're not going up a ton of elevation because what I don't want to do with this is I don't want to create an ex a experience that is only for people that are in amazing physical condition. It's essentially if you can walk eight kilometers in two hours, mm -hmm. you can do this. Very achievable. And I, I really do, I could talk about this for hours, just this, this one little narrow aspect of it, but um, I really do appreciate how, and again, and again, it's because you've curated the experience, which is something I keep coming back to. It's, it's very, very careful. You're, you're, you're pre-coaching, you're pre-guiding just by the way you construct the experience. But I love that you don't, you not only want to remove that barrier for entry, like you don't have to be, you don't have to be able to run like a five and a half minute mile or, you know, go, go 1500 feet on an elevation change in a day. But it also removes the temptation to turn it into some sort of physical challenge, an like another achievement unlocked, because that's not really that's not what you're there to do. It's something different. And that difference, that that sense of difference is what you're inviting in. And it's what it's what you're hoping that people will experience from the jump, because the moment they experience it. And I love that you described that experience where it's like, hey, wolf tracks, bear tracks. Huh. Not people tracks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that, and that's where the change journey begins, right there, right from the jump. And it opens them up and then you guide them through. I just there's so many things I love about the way you curated that. Like I said, I could I could I could dig into it for hours, but I want to ask you, I mean, obviously, like you said, is like the, one of the one of the physical requirements is to be able to walk, you know, you know, eight, you know, six to ten kilometers a day, you know, relatively leisurely pace in a mm -hmm. relatively flat environment. What what other aspects um do your clients have like is like who is this really who is this for primarily i'm sure you get all kinds of people interested in doing something like this but who is it at least the at least right now primarily that you're serving with this particular aspect of your coaching and i again i'm gonna have to have you back on to talk about everything else you're up to but that's yeah. that's a problem for a different day <laughs> no and so it, it is very interesting there's there's a couple interesting demographics uh mm -hmm. there's um some of it is a younger demographic. Like some of Gen Z is is very interested in it because nice. uh, it, it's so different from anything else that they've done. You do have the you know, VP or C-suite type person who has achieved something in their career, but they haven't really taken on this sort of challenge. You'll also just sort of find people that are generally approaching a transition point or think they're mm -hmm. at a transition point. I think mm -hmm. that's an interesting one. They think they're at a transition point. Uh, there's usually, I keep these groups small, like five people. Nice. Uh, Very good. Plus a videographer, plus volunteer to help out. But I find the people that are, they think they're coming in for, they think they're at a transition point. They're the ones that have really interesting perspectives and experiences mm -hmm. because they're going, wait, how I was holding that very similar to the experience that I had when this coach said, you realize your problem is actually this, this, and this. <laughs> They're like, ah, crap. I was trying to make a decision about something mm. that wasn't actually me addressing the thing that I want to address. It was, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to break up with this person because I'm unfulfilled in my career. Right. But they're hiding behind or it's, I'm going to change my job, but really I need to go and have a very important conversation with my spouse or you know, just something like that, where these people are sort of hitting this transition point and it really requires yeah. them to pause and to go, wait, what is the real challenge? Because usually what will happen is someone on that, on day two, they will have come to a conclusion about what action they're gonna take, hmm. but they can't take it for three more days. Mm. So by day three, sorry, by day five, they've had three days to think about this. They will usually come to me and say, hey, do you have a few minutes we can chat? Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and they walk me through their entire thought process because you're spending a lot of time just yeah, thinking and processing, shifting your perspective. And in, the career, 
and so it's re it is really exciting to to see people have that experience. And there's also by putting people in this environment and having it be somewhat of a physical challenge, mm -hmm. like all of, most of these people too, they're going like I've never done something this like this before, or I didn't realize I could do something like this. Nice, which is very empowering for them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then man. coaching them through the coaching them through the reentry is also important. That's oh man, there's. Honestly, we could do an episode on each individual aspect of just this coaching experience. I love this stuff. And one thing in particular, and I'm, I'm going to wrap us up here real quick because we're running out of time and I'm just I'm planning out our next half dozen episodes over the next like year and a half. Just, just so you know. But um, Perfect. I love that the decision, arriving at a decision and then sitting with it. That's something that we typically, and I say we is like, I'm using the royal we, human beings in the modern day. I think are kind of terrible at once a decision's made, we feel like then action must immediately occur right after that. Like the decision was the, was the end of the friction. And it's like, you know what? And I, I love that one of the, one of the benefits, one of the many benefits of this, of this, this coaching program that I freaking love wild walks, remote wilderness coaching. I'm going to say it one more time. One of the benefits of just having to sit there with a decision and not be able to act on it. And what moves into that space what changes about the questions you're asking yourself? What angles do you look at that decision from that you wouldn't have if you had just gone from, from zero to 60 in 0.3 seconds with that decision? I obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very taken with that because that's something that I try to practice myself in my day-to-day -day life, but it's challenging because my day-to-day -day life wants de decision, action, decision, action, decision, action, keep moving forward, lots of noise, lots to do, lots to get done. And having something that is structured and curated to do lots for you, but in particular, let you sit, invite you, demand that you sit with a decision about something you think is very important for a few beats, whatever a few beats mean, for a few moments, a few days, what comes out of that? I'm just... Honestly, anybody who's listening to this, work on this practice in your daily life. Do something like Wild Walks so that you can experience what this is like when you just sit with a decision for a little while. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Sorry, I should let you talk. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing a terrible job of interviewing you because I'm so excited by what you're doing. <laughs> no, I think I would say even just as a an entry point hmm. for people with this, there's, uh, there's a book called The Comfort Crisis written by hmm. a gentleman named Michael Easter. Uh, and he's got great data in there too, but really, if you are, I'm not quite ready to go and be in the wilderness for five days <laughs> with these crazy people, <laughs> three walks a week with hmm. just over, of just over 20 minutes hmm. with some sort of nature around you. So that can even be trees you know, that are on a boulevard, like that sort of counts. Or if you can get into a park a little bit and in, in in, even in an urban environment yeah. for without touching your phone for 20 minutes and six seconds <laughs> has a tremendous impact. So even just starting there, I promise you those first 20, first time you do this, those 20 minutes will be really uncomfortable. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll probably check your watch. And that's the thing if you, I don't wear a watch, so I can't check my phone. So I mm -hmm. have to just, the first time I did this, I was like, let me just see how far I go. And I put a little alarm on my phone. I was like, I can't touch mm -hmm. it, but I found myself wanting, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. So yeah, <laughs> that's just a great place to start. It's just 20 minutes out on a walk without touching your phone. Very revealing how you, how you react, where you're, where you're not just where your mind goes, but what your body does. How often do you pat your pocket? <laughs> it's just it, it's it's again and that's one of those it, it's basically a very good question to ask does this so this practice functions as a good coaching question because what comes out of that what new more interesting questions come out of that good question right there and that's that's a, that's a great place to start dang it okay i gotta get you out of here this no has problem. been fantastic Two-part question to close things up here we already kind of talked about it a little bit where can people go to find out more about you who you are, what you do, why you do it, stuff like this. Obviously, your LinkedIn profile is a good place to go. I'm sure you have a website we can direct people to. And if it's different, 
where can people best reach out to you, contact you to either, you know, talk about wild walks or talk about any of the coaching initiatives you have, or just say, you're a really cool dude. I'd love to get to know you better. <laughs> like how can people connect with you if they're looking for that too? No, I, I appreciate that. So I would say yes on, on LinkedIn, it's, you know, Graham Snowfield. Yes. I'm on the other social channels, whether it's, you know, Facebook, Instagram, I do have threads. I haven't started using it yet. That's, yes, that's coming up. <laughs> uh, also Graham, Graham snowfield.com as well uh for another day that we can talk about this you might find me somewhere under graham snowden s-n-o-w-d-e-n hmm. uh when my daughter was born my wife and i blended our last names to create snowfield awesome so that can also be an interesting conversation for some people who are, <laughs> who are interested in that so yeah if you see graham snowden it's also graham snowfield excellent all right well yeah i'll, I'll put links to all the stuff we talked about and everywhere in the show notes this has been i, I said at the beginning basically like future casting that this was going to be a delightful conversation. I was wrong. It was some word above delightful, <laughs> full of delight. However, I could say this has been great. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I'm, I really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm really not kidding. I wanted like the next available opportunity. I want to chat with you again, just to explore. Honestly, any of the things we touched on could be hour long conversations, which again is exactly how good coaching feels. In case you're curious about what it might be like to work with Graham, you got a little tiny taste of it here in this little 30 minute episode and you're probably gonna want more. So do yourself a favor. And now I'm talking to the audience. <laughs> Reach out, connect with Graham, find a way to get into his life, get into his orbit, learn about what he's doing. If you get a chance to talk to him, trust me, it's great. <laughs> so do that and yeah. You have anything you want to add before I before I cut you out of here? I feel like we've we've covered so much. <laughs> no, honestly, this was just I really appreciate being here. I really love the conversation. I know that people hear that, that there's, you know, like, is this person really that that thankful and that, you know, full of gratitude? Like it it honestly, yes, this was a lot of fun for me. And this is we were talking about emotional paydays, and certainly this is just this energy is it's I know the rest of my day is going to be better. I know I'm gonna show up with greater presence for the people in my life. As a result, just so thank you very, very much for having me. Same, same, same. Yeah, I'm at a standing desk, and it's been it's been everything I could do to not be bouncing on the balls of my feet. <laughs> I'm like, watch. I'm watching my head bounce around the screen like a screensaver, and I'm like, okay, Kevin, reel it in. It's okay. You've had too much coffee. Graham, thank you one more time, and I, I echo your sentiments the same. This has been fantastic. And again, to the audience, you know what to do. <laughs> I hope this has lifted your day just a tiny fraction as much as it's lifted ours, and. Hey, we will talk to you again here on this feed very, very soon. So thank you.